this camera has uh, two or three different what they call movements. That is, the camera has front, rise, and fall. It has rear, tilt, and it also has rear shift. I'm sorry, rear swing. I haven't used this camera in a while. Uh, so, what that means is that the front of the camera here, it can go up or it can go down. And that all changes the perspection that your subject appears on your ground glass. Right? It might look weird until you get the perspection just right. And you gotta get it angled just right, and then it's gonna be okay. The rear of the camera, woo, the rear of the camera cannot move up and down on this model. Some 8x10s, it can. Most 4x5s, it can. And that's 4x5 inches. This is an 8x10 inch camera. That's large. Almost as large as my face. Okay. So the rear of the camera can swing. If we face it towards just like this, the rear of the camera can move this way. That's sort of like taking your 35 millimeter camera and pointing it up or pointing it down. Pointing it up or pointing it down. But not really. What you would do if you had your regular 35mm camera is you would hold your lens still and then you would take the film and you would turn it up or down. And you can imagine what that would look like if you wanted to take uh, a, a magnifying glass or a, a Frenzel lens or something to that effect and you can move it up and down like so, up and down, up and down. You can even experiment if you wanted to by taking a regular lens off your 35mm camera and you can uh, hold it close to a wall and you'll see the picture, it'll be upside down, but you can see the picture there and you can just manipulate it around and see what that would do to the perspection of the image here on the uh, focal plane which is in our case the ground glass. The rear of the camera also can, can shift around the whatever axis this is. If you're facing the camera that is this way, the back of the camera can move front to back around an axis like this and it, as we said before, can move like this. And those all have complicated names but we don't care about any of that. Not important. And so, when you go to focus your camera. What you first want to do, sort of like running a microscope, you want to get it into what I call gross focus. That is, the majority of the image is in focus. Not fine, awesome, very good focus. It's just the majority of the image is in focus and you want to do that with this number up here. You want to do that with the front focus which on my camera happens to be the right hand knob. Once you get that pretty good, I like to go ahead lock that knob down so you can't adjust your front focus anymore. Not going to be moving on you. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your rear focus is good and locked down, isn't going to move on you. 
because it can. And let's say that for some reason something wasn't lined up. Ooh, that needs a little oil. Let's say that something wasn't lined up. You were taking picture of a large building and the top was way out of perspective. And you wanted the whole building to be lined up, but you're pretty close to it. So you would just sort of tilt this back whatever direction made sense to you. And then you're going to lock it down. And then third most, let's say, this whole of these are doing a tripod. Let's say that you wanted the stop sign that's next to the building in focus as well as the building. Well, you could take your rear swing, as they call it, and you can move it like this. Sort of like doing the twist. Yeah. And then once you get that done, you just go ahead and lock her down. And it ain't gonna move on you. And then you go through that whole process where you take your film carrier and you put it in and you go through all that lens business. And uh, that's, that's, about, that's about all.